Yesterday I, I brought all the wood down. I'm gonna organize the area and I, uh, I live up, actually, <laughs> I live right across the river, but you have to drive all the way down to town and then come around and come all the way back up. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, I brought all the wood yesterday and we did one yesterday, we did a box yesterday so that I could, well, have a hang of, of actually running Pequin and a box at the same time. I've never had to run both, so that was new. So, uh, so that was yesterday, but then so this morning I left the house at probably 5.50 and I went and I made uh, that uh, tea that's over there and I, I printed off flyers and I did all that stuff, got everything organized in my truck with, uh, with both the dogs who were only half awake. Early this morning, I split a bunch of wood into um, half inch to a one inch planks and all around the uh, bottom of the pit was, was these one inch uh, planks so that all the rocks would be uh, resting on wood. But then uh, the rocks are actually warmed up from all angles, you know, the bottom as well as the top. Um, if I didn't have the wood in there, all the rocks wouldn't be as as hot on the bottom as they would be resting on the earth or in the earth. So by by putting a wood underneath them, it helps to heat all the way around the rock. Um, after that, I build a fire on the rocks and then uh, gradually it just uh, builds and builds and builds and then you have what's here. I've got um, 35 in there. Um, I'll probably use all of them. Um, they're anywhere between as big as my my palm to as big as a, a pair of hands. Um, they used to all be as big as a pair of hands, but after the use and use and use, they eventually become smaller and smaller and smaller over the years. Um, and I will only ever try to have three to five rocks in the box at once. Um, because then I can begin to, to pull the rocks out and to reheat them if I do need them. Um, also then I'm not using all the room in the box just to house rocks. Okay, what's, what's in yeah, it's called um, 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 volcanic basalt. Okay. It's got one right here. It's got all the different holes and kind of oh, okay. and a crevices. Yeah, the, um, they will hold the heat and uh, um, they don't uh, break nearly as easily as a regular rock uh, would in that heat. They hold way, way more heat than your average uh, rock would. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, oh these ones were traditionally harvested from um, Squamish, okay. but uh, that's not a, a, the rock that we would use here because we wouldn't be uh, bringing back all the rocks from, a, yeah. from all the way over there. Yeah. Um, I use this this a pit because it's it's about a meter, and I need that much a room in order to house all the rocks and to heat them all up properly. Um, if uh, so, after my explanation, I'll begin to put the rocks in this box with uh, a lot of the equipment here. Um, these these pequin, these tongs, and these. Um, uh, um, that it's us are all made of ironwood or ocean spray. Um, that is uh, uh, the a traditional uh, plant that's used. Uh, it's very fire resistant. Um, then uh, the next uh, piece of equipment would be this uh, a lovely red cedar bentwood box. If you have any experience with botany, it's also um, uh, um, the oils in it are, yes, naturally uh, poisonous, but after using it over and over and over, it actually leaches all of the oils out of the wood, and then you can actually use it and prepare food. So I had to uh, uh, boil uh, water in there multiples <laughs> of times in order to uh, draw out all those natural oils. While I'm on the box, there's a, this a lovely brush here, which I'll be uh, 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 using to a brush all the ash or at least the majority of the ash off the rocks 
um, which is made of cedar, which is also a uh, natural antimicrobial. So all the little itty bitty bugs that are in all the plants around here are not in, in that brush. That's one of the reasons it's used as a brush. If you've ever been at a lodge, this is the altar. Um, I will be bringing the rocks out of here on the altar, brushing them off, and then they will go into the box. Now, if you're worried about a little bit of ash or a little bit of a stone in your meal, then you won't be eating the potatoes because as, as much as I can brush them over and over and over, there's going to be a little bit of ash on them. So I, I have to apologize for the inconvenience. Um, I should uh, begin the box at, at uh, 11 o'clock. And then an hour after that, uh, I will begin the uh, the uh, the uh, the pequin. Um, I'm expecting uh, Della Rice will be here to do a walk at uh, um, noon to walk everybody around, so you you know you could hear a bit about the plants. Okay, we're just gonna go load these up. So. the salmon okay okay underneath this high um, collarbone over where the spine would be and then back through the collarbone just like that get those spread out these uh, sticks are made of ironwood the traditional name of these is uh, um, dad's asp, which basically translates to um, spreader stick. Real, real easy to understand. Um, they just keep it from growing. Yeah, it's precisely what it is. These would also be used if you were um, smoking it. It would all be um, hanging in like a uh, uh, um, smokehouse. So you would have all of these uh, through it and you would hang it uh, literally out of the rafters and let it uh, smoke for the uh, the day or however long you were going to leave it for. And those just sit between the vertical yeah. split holes. Precisely, precisely. It's not really rocket science. You have to always have to imagine that whatever we're, we're about to do would have to be um, reproduced by by people without without steel or without uh, a whole lot of access to um, electric uh, power tools or anything. So a lot of it's pretty pretty uh, basic. Well, you put one through the center. Yeah. Does that cook at the same speed or? What's that? Uh, the center. Uh, no, it'll be a little bit longer in, in order to keep the the middle cook. Mm -hmm. There we go. Twist that. Excuse me. Um, traditionally, obviously, they wouldn't use wire. <laughs> they would use. Uh, um, I can't remember the name for it. Uh, Tatlow or Tatlow, um, it was a, a bull kelp line. If you've ever been to the beach, there's those long, long ends. Well, they would uh, cure those in um, 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 fat and then leave them out to uh, a dry and cure and then use it for all kinds of um, 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 rope uses. Right. Um, one of them was was obviously uh, uh, wrapping this. I had to leave the collarbones on because they are what really hold up the uh, uh, body of the animal. Um, also, whenever you have to uh, uh, prep one of these, it's uh, it's easier um, with experience. <laughs> Um, removing all of the 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 uh, uh, spine bones and the rib 
a bones without um, ruining it. So actually a, um, a lost art form that uh, I don't act like I'm any, any, any one of the artists. <laughs> yeah, I know this is way easier. The cheating here. Della knows right away. It's cheating. <laughs> How are you cheating? Uh, <laughs> so uh just before i begin to 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 bring this over um i'd like to ask three favors one um is that all the elders eat before anybody else um, next is that uh, yeah. I'm going to be having to go between here and over there a lot with a lot of hot objects. So if we could have this area um, wide open. And lastly, if one of the elders would be kind enough to uh, um, help us with a um, prayer before we eat, that would be really appreciated. Um, you don't have to put your hands up now, but if you want to put your hands up afterwards, that would be really tight. Thank you. Yeah. I apologize that I have to be going back and forth. Thank you. <laughs> don't use all the rocks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for this beautiful meal. <laughs> Hello. 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 We made a birthing lodge for her at the top of the hill. I went around singing and gathering sword fern because we were making her birthing lodge. So I put the moss down, then the sword fern on top of the moss. And then I went back and I thought, well, I got another armful, it's too much. So I seen a tub full of water at the bottom of the hill. So I went down there and I put the sword fern in the tub, right? It was a hot summer's day. July 25th and so the sword fern stayed in there it was in the morning when I put it in there and then by before noon or something we couldn't find my sister-in-law the property was down the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill and we were making her birthing lodge at the top of the hill for heaven's sakes <laughs> <laughs> we finally found her in the tub at the bottom of the hill sitting in the tub this was during labor she refused to get out, and I said, but we made a birthing lodge for you at the top of the hill. <laughs> so in the end, her husband and one of the other guys lifted her out of the tub. And we brought her up the top of the hill to the birthing lodge. She had baby within a short time, but that was an absolute fact that it took the pain from the childbirth. First step, first step. Well, I do make tea from horsetail. <laughs> but usually they have those those um, hairs on them. So this is the male, right? This will have all those. This will be a horsetail. It's kind of weird. When it has the hair on it, it does look like a horsetail. Horsetail is full of calcium. Calcium and silica, right? I do make a tea, but I don't say make a tea, right? I only make a tea with it when somebody has a bad respiratory stuff. Only when they have come to me and said, you know, a couple of things I use only when they say it keeps coming back. 
it keeps coming back. So using horsetail to drink it makes it like a like it's a scrub brush inside you cell inside your lungs. It's a scrub brush. And you don't use lots at all. You don't just go out and do it. I'm just telling you. When do I do it? I'm just showing you because you're here. And it was yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> What is this now? Is that blackberry? Blackberry, right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Trailing wild blackberry. <laughs> A long time ago. <laughs> Maybe um, hair was washed with blackberry, eh? The root of the, root of the blackberry washed and it helps keep your hair the same color that it is without going so gray. <laughs> How is my hair? I, I really don't know if my hair was personally washed. I assume it was because I spent too much time with the elders anyways. <laughs> but um, <laughs> my hair is pretty dark. But, but I hate that when it's catching like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, but, but blackberry is very astringent. Right? It pulls tight. How does it pull tight? Oh. I got my teeth pulled, you know? Probably, I got my teeth, top teeth pulled, and then the plates put in right away, right? I don't know how many teeth were pulled out of there, whatever it was. And I went to see my grandson, grandnephew, and, and I had made joint pain personally myself. So when I got there, he had joint pain, with blackberry root, lots of blackberry root, and one other thing called licorice fern root. But I put it on, and there was, it totally relieved my mouth. So which means you can take these things and make them into tea, and it's kind of a dry tea, but but that's it, eh? The seeds from the fir trees are vitamin C. Four of them, four of the seeds, equals the vitamin C content of one orange. One orange, just like the rose hips. You know those Nutco roses that we see here and there all over, those pretty pink roses? Four of those are also the vitamin C content of one orange. One day, somebody's got to tell me the vitamin C content of one orange. <laughs> <laughs> this is the grand fur. Maybe just take it, just bite it, let it sit like a lozenge, just let it hang out. Usually just letting it hang out is good. Okay. <laughs> This is the one that looks like holly and is not holly, right? No, this is not holly, right? <laughs> oh. Smell the end. Do you want a knife, Stella? No, usually... Um. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, good for the liver, right? So anybody with HIV, AIDS, and stuff like that, this is the number one plant that I would make. It's cooling, cooling to the body, soothing and cooling. And if you smell it, that's the taste of it, right? The root, it's yellow. There might be only one or two plants. This is, this is a whole mine here. <laughs> there may be only one or two plants like that. And so, and why the root is yellow? So you can boil and boil and boil the root to be, it becomes a rich yellow. Sometimes it's a rich yellow. 
So at Easter time, you can use the root to boil the eggs. Yellow. And it has the medicine of it in there. <laughs> in the summer, then you look on a whole field and find the red one. Like I do use the green sometime, but uh, preferably the red. Preferably always the red, then you know the root is full. The root has got the medicine in it that you need, right? <laughs> Wild organ grape. Toothpick, AIDS and things like that, upper intestinal tract, um, cooling, it's a cooling drink. If I go to an AIDS workshop, and that's the only workshop I personally have ever brought in drinks to, and this will be one of the main ingredients in that.